Howie Shu, who's an entrepreneur in residence at a yet to be disclosed venture capital firm um, in, uh, in California somewhere. So I know you not, can't talk about it. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you. Former Cisco, former VMware. You were on last year um, on theCUBE. We we're talking about virtualization, containers, all that good stuff, SDN. Um, now that you left Cisco and you went to become an EIR, that means you're working on something pretty big. So it's the most exciting time in my you know, career for this you know, very disruptive age. So Howie, talk about the, the, uh, the trends. I know we can't really talk about some of the things that where you're going to go, you're going to announce that on Thursday. So look for Thursday, an announcement on what Howie's next step is going to be. But containers, okay, we're going to have Jerry Chen on shortly. Um, great first investment that he did at Greylock uh, with containers Docker. We heard Pete Sunstein saying, hey, a lot of people missed the Docker craze. You know, props to Jerry Chen on that one. And he's got some follow-on investments he's doing. Containers and DevOps are really changing the game at the application level, okay? Under the hood, what are some of the changes that you see happening that people should be paying attention to? Well, before we get onto the under the hood, I think we need to pop up. What is the big picture, right? You know, to me, the big picture is really, you know, last time, last year we talked about business outcome, but it's a, it's a cliche. So when I think about business outcome, it's actually, you know, something extremely concrete. It's sort of the, you know, in the past, the IT industry is about delivering the resilience with the, you know, the security, with the, um, with the sort of the, you know, saving. But now it's about delivering the new business outcome, delivering the sort of the, um, the new applications at a speed. So there is a collision between the resilience and the agility. So that collision actually forced us to relook at what is the platform? Is that a virtualization? Is that a container? Is that the, you know, the old traditional uh, model or this the DevOps model, right? You know, at the end of the day, it's really about that collision. So it's the new world versus the old world. So, so that's the sort of the big picture. So let me ask you a question. Does hybrid cloud really exist? Or is that just an outcome of implementing and deploying you know, technology on-prem, on private, and public? I think, you know, the jury's still out. If you look at the revenue, I think it's yet to come. I mean, that's pretty clear. If you look at uh, the potential, it's there. Now, all the vendors, Cisco, VMware, IBM, all the traditional vendors love hybrid cloud because they missed the boat on the public cloud, right? They didn't do the Amazon. And uh, they know that a private cloud has its, you know, uh, limitation. And uh, they come up with this story. That story can be uh, real, but it has not matured, it has not matured yet. Let's talk about that. So last, yesterday we were on theCUBE, me and Dave Vellante were talking with Mark Lewis, formerly ran uh, EMC Ventures, now doing his own uh, startup called Formation Data. He's trying to kind of create a, you know, go big or go home opportunity. But we made a comment uh, on our pre-game, pre-show uh, CUBE segment about who's winning. And we were trying to peg the inning of using a baseball metaphor of where this industry is. And we were debating. I was saying cloud native is, is, you know, hasn't even begun yet. And Dave's like, oh, no way, Amazon's out there. So Mark Lewis pointed out that it's, Inning game one of a doubleheader. Game one, Amazon won. Okay, so that's over. But game two is the enterprise. And so Amazon has yet to win that one. So the question I want to ask you, what's different about this game that's now happening in the enterprise? What are the key differences that won't let Amazon just run the table. So go back to my original thesis about this resilience versus the agility. So Amazon certainly won the game for the agility. However, they have yet to proven that it has enough security, it has enough resilience. Now you can say some of that is just emotional and people just need to get used to it. But the, the, the thing is, you know, the resilience, people do not appreciate enough the resilience of it. So Amazon needs to work on it. Yet for the traditional vendors, they need to add agility into their sort of the products. So that's a race. So that's the second, you know, second game. I, I very much like that analogy. Yeah. And it's going we'll see how it plays out. It's happening right yes, now. Yes. Okay, so what are you looking for for VMware now to compete? So, you know, Pete Sonsini was saying, hey, I'm a VC, I write big fat checks at NEA. If someone has an opportunity to compete with VMware, I'm all ears, but I don't think containers is going to wipe out VMware. So I got to ask you, will containers wipe out VMware or potentially throw them on their heels? What is the impact of containers relative to the, you know, two year investment in hybrid cloud that a lot of these companies have? So if you remember correctly, uh, you know, I mentioned this you know, last time that it's actually, you know, the potential is certainly there to disrupt the virtualization, disrupt the VMware, but it also has to do with the execution. If you look at uh, you know, OpenStack, OpenStack you know, was having a lot of this promise, but from you know, the VC perspective, I think it wasn't you know, turning out as good. At least in game one, maybe it has a second life, but in the first life, I don't think you know, VC made a lot of money out of OpenStack. I think a lot of it has to do with the government's model. 
model has to do with the execution. Now, Docker is yet another thing that you know can potentially disrupt the VMware. It has to do, you know, the industry has to execute. I think arguably VMware dodged the bullet of the OpenStack. I mean, OpenStack probably didn't have any negative on VMware's business. If, if anything, it probably has a little bit positive. Yeah, they create you know, some confusion and some, and, and it didn't and, move fast enough. And, and uh, you know, they took advantage of it. That they actually, you know, put some image, uh, you know, open image on it. Uh, VMware actually got, you know, got some wing out of it. Docker, you know, they are trying to sort of, you know, instead of. I don't of, see the win you know, for VMware at Docker. You? Well, you know, last year, uh, the C, you know, in the keynote speech, they said, you know, um, better together, right? You know, you know, the CTO on the stage said, who would want to, you know, manage, uh, you know, containers individually? And at this time, on key, the same key keynote speech, they actually have a vCenter, you know, managing each of the containers. I think, you know, they are sort of, you know, trying to adapt to the new world. You know, the, the question is how fast the VMware is going to transition. I mean, for any incumbents to transition, it's always hard. Yeah. So that's the sort of... Well, one driver in this, we'll, we'll talk now, about as developers. You're seeing DevOps here and the hang space and downstairs here at VMworld. Big DevOps focus. Um, they have a lot of technical geeks at VMware who see DevOps. You know, you've been involved in VMware with vSphere. You're seeing a lot, there's a lot of geeks there that get DevOps. Maybe the management <laughs> on the sales side maybe not materializing, but that trend is coming fast for them. They have an opportunity. Yeah, one of the things I particularly like DevOps is the, you know, what's the next uh, 10x, 100x improvement for this sort of, you know, we, we bring to the business, right? And, you know, if I look at the last two or three decades, you know, Intel, Microsoft, the VMware, those are all horizontal technologies. And those horizontal technologies deliver the 10x, 100x, you know, improvement to the business. And it's pretty hard for those technologies to deliver the next 10x, 100x. I think the next uh, sort of the big thing will be vertical integration, right? You know, from the, from from the beginning of the you know business requirement all the way to you know build it, test it, and then run it. You know that vertical integration, and then that would give you 100x speed to to sort of churn out the applications. Yeah. I view that DevOps will, you know has that potential to give the next 10x, 100x. Uh, Howie, that's a great point. Let's let's double click on that. Let's go drill down on that because I love that because you heard Pat Gelsinger saying you know it's disruption. And he broke it out kind of by industry. You see in big data, vertical solutions, prepackaged vertical apps are are successful because of domain expertise and a lot of cool things. However, horizontally scalable concept <laughs> is also something that's happening at the same time. So how do people get their arms around those two mega trends? Okay, integrated systems, call it engineered systems, a la Oracle, a la whatever, you know, and, and horizontally scalable open source. So this is really a big thing. What's your take on it? What's happening in this space? Is it relevant? Are they not relevant? Because well, one of the there are many angles into this problem. One of the angles to look at this problem is this vertical, in, vertical integration for a particular sort of sector, a particular verticals. Um, in Pat Gelsinger's sort of the keynote speech this morning, he mentioned the healthcare, you know, stratosphere, all those sort of the, the business. My argument here is, if you sort of marry the technology to those vertical sort of the sectors, then it would bring those sort of the next ten x, hundred x improvements. Because if you think about it, you know, the example he gave is we went from close to zero smartphone to, you know, almost three billion connected people. What's the next 10x? You cannot do 10x because at most you do 2x because we have six billion people, right? But however, among the, you know, three billion connected people, what do we do? We have big data, but that's a very horizontal technology. That horizontal technology has now yielded the big decision, big, you know, sort of the, uh, you know, top line decision yet. So my argument is once we sort of trans transition from this big data, you know, sort of thing, into the big decision thing, then we will see 100x, 1,000x um, uh, productivity. Yeah, and then the pacing item on that, on the, or the threshold, will be speed, right? Performance. Yes. Low latency, yes. <laughs> real time. Yeah, I think you know that's the sort of the yeah. still a little bit horizontal. When I say vertical, I mean actually marrying the, those technology all the way to the you know CEO level sort of the decision. Yeah. You know why those latency matters to him or her, right? That's the sort of the. Well, things. the one thing I can learn from the game one where Amazon won is, I mean, they're dominating with Redshift on the data warehouse market because their price point and performance is so radically different. Yes. I mean that is just a low hanging fruit. They're knocking that out of the park. So let's bring that into game two of the cloud. What do people do? I mean, start chipping away at these, these weak parts of the market that are overpriced, bloated software models, shitty code bases? 
Well, there are two, two particular sectors I'm pers personally interested in. One we already talked about, the DevOps. The other one is security. I mean, security is completely broken, right? You know, um, you know, you pick a random person, you know, that person can probably learn some, you know, download some scripts from Russia and then break into a random data center. That's how robust our sort of secure, secure data center <laughs> is today. Not because that person is smarter than the rest of the six billion people. It's just, uh, you know, uh, security is not there. So my point is that security will be, uh, you know, a, a next big thing. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to talk about Steve Herod with that. It's going to be fun. Perimeterless security is a moving train right now, and it's hard. Yeah, I we mean, spend the last two or three decades on this, you know, security architecture with this notion. There's a perimeter. There is, you know, this box, and then now we realize, wow, you know, there's no such perimeter. Dropbox, virtualization, bring your own device, completely change the picture. Which, which means that the emperor doesn't have clothes. That's yeah, totally true. Well, I got to ask you because I know, I kind of know where you're going to land on Thursday when the press release goes out. You're going to become an entrepreneur in residence at a big time venture capital firm, um, which is great. I mean, it's a, it's a place to play. It's kind of like, you know, you're, you're incubating an idea. It's kind of like your halfway house between, you know, getting out and, and doing something big. Um, so I'm curious, where's your head at right now? I mean, in terms of, you know, obviously you've had a great run, VMware. You had a great run at Cisco. You've seen the landscape, you talk to customers, you kind of see the big picture. Where's your head at right now? What are you thinking about? What's getting you excited? Well, you know, you have to really make an impact to those sort of the uh, business outcome. I mean, one of the insights I got, you know, from talking to so many CIOs is, CIOs' job is pretty tough, because, you know, every day they meet so many technology companies. It's like they are VC, right? You know, so many technology companies, you know, wh how to tell who who's real, who's not real, that's sort of the noise. And then the other thing is, when I put everything together, you know, when I look at it individually, okay, it delivered this value. When I put everything together, can I really manage that complexity? It's a very tough job. A CIO is a, literally a venture capital, you know, uh, person these days. And, uh, yeah, and they're like know, a drill sergeant at the same time because they got to manage the operations yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, it's the total cost of ownership. So how am I going to give them something that, you know, give them the value, yet not, you know, give them additional headache? That's sort of the tough thing, right? You know, but, but that's an exciting time to sort of, you know, because they really have a big problem, but they really have the complexity, and then they have so many choices, and then they, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's a tough thing. So I want to make their life easier. You'd be the pharmacist. Aspirin, you got the vitamins, and you got the vaccines, you know, the, the, the doctor. Well, Howie, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate you spending the time. Howie Shu, entrepreneur in residence at a yet to be named venture capital firm. Um, stay tuned for more details uh, coming this week. We'll be right back with more live in San Francisco. This is theCUBE. Director set here at Moscone North for VMworld 2015. We'll be right back after this short break.